So you know I've made many videos on how to control these WS2812 LEDs, but one thing I never really got into was how to create animations with them. So right here we have a 16 by 16 grid of those LEDs and I had to create a small little circular animation for this Halloween costume here. And to do this, I made a very simple little tool here in Microsoft Excel that auto-generates the code I need to light up the LEDs. So it does all of the mapping and, and everything for me. And I usually do this on my animation projects. So let me show you how all this works. And I am aware of software that you can use to create animations as well. A lot of stage effect software and things like that. But... In this video, I'm just going to show you how I did it here completely from scratch. So here we go. So this is the same exact sketch that I did that video on where I showed you how to control these WS2812 LEDs. So we've got this single function here to uh, actually update the entire LED string. So it says RGB update the LED number and then the RGB value from 0 to 255. So this is nice and all, but if you look at this matrix, the 16 by 16, what would LED number be for right here? So it'd be really useful to actually convert everything to an XY coordinate. So let me show you what I mean. So right here in the loop, if we just loop through all 256 LEDs, we turn it on at, uh, actually I want to make this an I like that. We loop through all 256 LEDs and we go... Uh, 255 there for the R value and then turn it off, you'll see what this does. So let's upload that. So you see it's going through and now you can kind of see how the matrix is laid out. It's just one big string kind of just smashed all together like that. So what we need to do is figure out a function that if we give it an XY coordinate, it will light up anything. So from 0 to 15 would be the X and then 0 to 15 would be the Y like that. And that would really help a lot in our animation because then we can, you know, actually kind of draw out images and things, especially when we get over to the uh, little helper thing I created in Excel here because this is just an XY coordinate here that we're uh, turning or enabling each LED on here. So let me show you that. So this is what I came up with, map LED XY. So all it does is it takes in an X and a Y coordinate with the RGB value and figure out where in the XY coordinates there does it belong in the overall array there. So this is actually pretty easy. So we get the X and the Y and then we figure out which is an even or odd column because you see how it's going like this. It's going up and down like that. So we need to figure out what the columns are and the columns go like this. So these are each a column, and then this is a row. So all of the row values would be the same from 0 to 15, like that. But then when it's coming down like this, it's just going, going to be the opposite. So this is kind of just a, a basic little uh, algorithm here. So to figure out first if we're in an even or odd column based on the y value we're given, uh, I use the modulo operator here, and it's just dividing by 2. So, of course, every even number divides evenly by 2. So that, if it's equal to 0, we know that we're in an even column. So if we had our first, uh, let's say, 0, 0. So we're given a, uh, a column value for 0, which is the y, and also x is 0. That comes in here, passes. We know we're in an even column. So this would be multiplied by 16 would be 0, and then the x, of course, is 0. So if we're in that first, you know, let me just turn this off. Yeah, so if we're right here in this column here, okay, we are in column 0. So that would be up here, this would be a 0, and then all of the x values just pass in, which makes sense. That's in our array. It goes from 0 to 15 and then 16 all the way up to 31. So it's going 0 to 15, 16 to 31, and then it just keeps zigzagging back and forth through the array like that. So if we go down now to the next column, column 1, now we're in the odd column, so we're right here. And the only thing we have to do there is you see we, see, we actually take 15 subtracted by x because we want to invert this like that. So 
if we were at, let's say, uh, we wanted to give it a value of column 1, so it would be 0, 1 would be the coordinate, which would be this LED right here, the next one in line. In the matrix, or in the array, this would be position 31. So how do we get 31? So you see we're right here. We want this location to be 31. And every time we increment the column, we have, mul we have a little multiplier over here that we add to it because we're incrementing by 16 LEDs on every single column we move up through. So right away, we're going to have 16 added to it. And this would be position 0. So that would be 15 plus 16 which gives us the 31. So now you can kind of see how that works and it just goes all the way through till the end there. And now we've got an XY map of all of the LEDs. And then down here is where we take that location and the RGB array, the massive array, has a location for the blue, the red, and the green value and that's how we do it here, to multiply it by three as we work through it, which I also explained in the uh, video I did on all of this because we're doing the same thing down here. When we send it down a value or an LED number from 0 to uh, 255 in this case, it's going to map the RGB values in the big RGB array. Okay, and just to show you that this works, I'm going to loop through and map LED XY now We'll leave the X position at 0, and we're just going to loop through the Y positions from 0 to 15 and set those LEDs to red, go ahead and update the array, and just by passing in this negative 1 there, it will not do anything with these RGB values. It's just, it's just going to take the array that we had updated from map LED XY and push it out to the LEDs. So let's upload this and I'll show you what it does. Okay, and there you have it. You see how it's just going straight up through all of the Y positions? So now we have a full XY coordinate position system now in the matrix. And this by itself is useful for animating. And I actually did a, a small animation on a grid like this before with blobs as they're kind of moving and bouncing around. I can now increment the X and Y values or decrement them to kind of have them all floating around here, bouncing off of the walls and everything. Can you imagine doing that with just one big massive array as it zigzagged? How would you keep track of your location in the matrix? So, actually sounded kind of funny. So that's what this allows you to do now. So let's move on and create some auto gen code. So this was kind of fun here. I just created this in Excel and this might look like extremely tedious what I did here, but Actually, it wasn't that bad because I used the Arduino itself to create all of this code, which is kind of funny. So you just, I mean, in the Arduino, you just serial.print out to the serial monitor window and then just copy and paste that, and it'll create a lot of stuff for you, and that's what I did. Um, so check this out. So we've got that matrix right here, 0 to 15, 0 to 15, and these are all just X, Y coordinate positions, and I want to create those map LED XY uh, pieces of code now. So each one of these LEDs, when we light it up like that, we can just copy and paste this line right here and put it right into our code. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to set the R value, or the red value, to 255. And then I'm just going to first give you a demo showing you what this can do. OK, so that's what I want to display. So I go right here, and I copy this cell right here. I'll come down here and I'll just paste it in. Okay, I pasted that line in right there. We're going to update and then a delay and that's it. Let's just see what it does. And there you have it. So what we put in the Excel sheet there now shows up there. And if I wanted to animate, what I could do is clear this out and draw the next frame in our animation. I could even make the RGB values down here variables. Like if I put this R as I, for example, like that, now you can see in the code the R value is an I. So check this out. So now what I'm doing is looping through the values of I, which would be R, or the red value, starting at 0 to 255, so it's going to control the brightness there, and then bring it back down to 0, and then just loop through that. Let me upload that.
and there you have it. You see how it's bringing the brightness up and then fading back down, back up. Okay, so how does this Excel sheet here work? Well, we, wherever we put a 1 here in the grid, it will create a map LED XY of it. And what it's doing is selecting the RGB values that you put in right here. So if we take, for example, the position at 0, 0, which would be the one right up here, and I do have a 1 there, so it's going to display map LED XY. And I've, so the formula I put in for this value down here is a little if statement. So only if that cell B2 is greater than 0, then we're going to display this map LED XY with the X and Y position, which are right next to it. You see X is 0, Y is 0. And then the values for red, green, and blue. You see the little dollar signs in there so that I can lock those cells in and then I can just copy down straight on through for the remaining X, Y positions. And if it's false, just make it blank. So as I fill this out, you'll see that you get these little map LED XYs. And I've got one of these for every single cell in that grid. All of this was auto-genned from the Arduino. So I wrote a little like looping thing in Arduino. Maybe I actually have that. Yeah, I've got a little example of that. Let me show you this. So I left this in this other sketch here, and you can see cell count. And I went through, and uh, like the cells and then printed out these concatenate f formulas automatically for me. So, you know, why not use the Arduino to create some of this stuff for you? But anyway, at the end of this, you've got all of these things. So every w single one of these would activate one of those LEDs. So according to whatever you've got selected up here. So then what I did was concatenate those. And that's what all of these do right here. Each one of these is a concatenation of these. But the problem here is that the concatenate um, thing here in, in Excel can only accept, I think, like 30 or so, um, yeah, I think 30 or so values. So what I did was broke it up into 25 of these. So it goes through, uh, yeah, 25. So it goes through, concatenates like 25 of these, and then another 25, and another 25, until you've got them all. So that's what this is. Then what I did was had one final one that concatenates all of these. And then you have this big massive line here. And then you can just copy and paste that out. So I just copied that. And then when you paste it into your code up here, like that, it's huge. And this works. So this will actually compile. You can actually have code in line like that as long as you have the semicolon. So that's how that works, and I've done a couple of these in the past, just depends on the project, but it's so quick to do this versus like trying to do it all manually, like I said, even with the XY stuff, if you're trying to like create an orb in there that animates or moves around or dances or do something, it's really hard to kind of figure that stuff out, so this helps. Even if you only use this to just give you the XY coordinates, you don't have to actually, you know, generate real code for you, but... Anyway, so let's actually create an animation here. I'll show you how this would work. So I think for this example, I'm just gonna keep it simple and, and have a circle right here at one color, and then I'll have little blocks kind of circle around that. So I'll probably uh, speed this up a little bit, but this will be kind of the idea of this animation. I will use a color meter picker thingy here to get the RGB value. I just picked some random color here. That should look pretty cool for that center circle. So I put those in down there, and we'll go ahead and grab that line of code and put it in. Well, that looks pretty cool. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention that this area here has a conditional uh, format on it so that if it ever sees a value in there greater than zero, it will uh, highlight the cell blue like this. So I think you can do that in, uh, oh, right here, conditional format here. So greater than zero is what I've got on there. And I also have a conditional format on it so that if the cell is less than zero, so like minus one like that, it goes, uh, it goes red like that. And the reason for that is because I already have the code for this circle. So now all I want to do is 
highlight these as red so that I know where they're at. Okay, so I think we'll start there and then just work our way around the circle with this animation. And I think a color for this would be a nice bright blue. So just 255 on the blue, green will be to zero, red at zero. All right, so I've been working my way through this, grabbing that line of code every time I add a new dot there. So back here, I think it's time to test it out and see what it looks like. Yeah, so that looks pretty cool. All right, I just finished uh, the entire circle around. And one of the things I could have done, because every time I was copying that over, it was copying all the previous ones over, and because I'm not blanking it out, I could have changed those to negative ones every time I went through. That way it's only updating, you know, the pixel that I'm adding to it. But either way, this works too. But we've got the entire thing here. And it looks pretty cool. So I could actually now add another animation to then blank them out around, you know, so it fills through and then it empties it. But just for a quick demo here, this is, uh, I think, good enough. I did have to add a function here to this clear LEDs out, which just wipes out the entire array. And this is pretty easy. It's right up here, void clear LEDs which does a mem set on it, so it sets every single value in the RGB array, all of them, the size of, to zero. And also, I found that I had my Excel file was mirrored, the, the, uh, the actual Y position was mirrored. So, quick, easy fix on that was I just up here in the map LED XY function, I swapped X and Y, and now this uh, actually is exactly the way the Excel file looks. So anyway, I hope that video uh, was interesting to you. Maybe uh, it'll help you out. So, uh, thanks for watching.